Now, India is not short of a guru or two, but when it comes to popularity, few can compete with Sri Sri. In his white robes, even a simple stroll conjures up scenes of some kind of messiah. At night, the crowds die down, giving me the chance to consult the man they call Guruji. We're talking about spirituality. It seems from what we've seen in this program that more people are searching harder for inner peace these days. Would you agree? Correct. They want some solace. They're looking for some meaning to life. That quest has begun. But why now and why more than before? I think that at some level people are saturated with the material things that they have been having. That's one reason. Second uh, is you know, whether they are rich or poor, everyone wants to be happy. And for that they have to go deep inside. But is materialism completely inconsistent? with spirituality? I don't think so. That's not, uh, it's not an impediment. You don't have to renounce everything and go to Himalayas to find yourself. You can do all, you can take care of all your responsibility. At the same time, find some time for your inner nurturing. With its pure marble temple, Sri Sri's ashram currently houses about 6,000 people. All are here to take an art of living course and maximize their inner peace. Meditation, breathing techniques, and a huge dose of spiritual wisdom. There's no getting away from it. It's a pretty impressive sight. Thousands of people over there learning the art of meditation and seeking inner peace. It's also a very seductive feeling. You can see what they're striving for. And yes, I'd like to have a little bit of that too. The breathing exercises. Uh, I saw some today. What do they do? What are they geared to be doing? You know, the link between body and mind is the breath. For every rhythm of the breath, there is a particular a state of mind or emotion which is attached. You know, like when you are agitated, you breathe differently. When you are angry, you breathe differently. When you are calm, the breath flows different. So breathing can energize you, make you more alert, more aware. It sharpens the intellect, makes your body and mind uh, coordinate better. The very second day, people start seeing the change in them how they feel relaxed and more calm and composed, serene. And then the more they practice, that becomes, um, it becomes a more concrete experience. It seemed like the perfect antidote for the tired traveler. It takes time, though, to learn the art of living. However, with the help of my teacher, Vikram, I gave the basics my best shot. Three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale. I've never really done anything like this before. I've always thought of myself as the sort of practical person. But I have to say, the deep breathing exercises, well, it has made me feel better. And if I am skeptical, about the emotional benefits of doing all of this, well, I'll keep an open mind. The big question is, how do I integrate it 4,000 miles away back in my daily life? Now that's the challenge. Less of a challenge is the ashram's Ayurvedic health center. If I'm not mistaken, my spiritual side is starting to rise up. In fact, I was positively floating. When you walk around your ashram, people bow. I know it's custom to touch your feet. Do you ever get embarrassed? You know, it used to in the beginning. I, I, I used to be a very shy person. 
I wouldn't like people praising and, uh, you know. Um. There's a tradition in India, bowing down, you know, the way of greeting an elder is to go completely down. It's a, sometimes a big problem because a person is bowing down, the person behind him doesn't see it and he bows down and one fall on the other and it takes me forever to take a short walk. Not only this, I tell you even more, that people throw flowers petals at me. And of course you need to have some glasses to protect your eyes from those flowers. <laughs> At one place, in one of the um, gatherings, we told people to don't, don't, please don't throw flowers. You know, once it, it did hit my eyes. You know what I landed up with? Rice. Oh. <laughs> Fifi's message of peace and tolerance has spread to more than 140 countries. Some skeptics label him as too self-promoting. But people from all walks of life are signing up regardless of their religious background. The relationship that exists between spirituality and religion, it is often one that is confused, isn't it? Because let's take, for example, the art of living. Um, you, you, you go to great lengths to prove, out, to prove that it is not religious per se. Would that be fair? Correct. Because his spirituality is uh, something beyond religion. Religion is uh, confined to certain practices uh, and symbols. It transcends the religious boundaries. Now, another thing is, though the roots of this knowledge is in Hinduism, the yoga and meditation, it made it so secular in a sense that people belonging to any religious background, community, belief system, have no difficulty in getting benefit out of it. Do you believe that is the way we are probably going to move forward in the future? Some variant of secular spiritualism? Absolutely, absolutely. Only that can unite people. Otherwise, if we are confining ourselves with limited ideologies or dogmas, then, you know, um, you can't be of use to the entire world. You can't unite the entire world. On my third day in Bangalore, the attention shifts, this time to a nearby airfield. The 25th anniversary celebrations are only hours away. The sun is setting. The seats are filling as far as the eye can see. They expect two and a half million people here over the next three days. The scale of this event is simply breathtaking. That stage alone holds 3,800 musicians. The evening rolls on. Spiritual, religious, governmental leaders preach peace and unity and Sri Sri receives countless blessings there's Vedic chanting and of course more meditation by the time I make it onto the stage the crowds have been whipped up into a state of mild delirium. They're experiencing a true spiritual high. And just as I'm trying to reconcile what I'm seeing with the reality of the world's problems, His Holiness catches my eye. What happened next was not part of the script. I didn't know the words, and I certainly wasn't a VIP. But there I was, next to Guruji with a million eyes wondering who I was. It was a fitting end to a fascinating, uplifting journey. As human beings, we are driven to explore, to explain the inexplicable. Our intelligence means that at times we are doomed to suffer inner turmoil, despair, disillusionment when answers aren't forthcoming. Whatever our religious beliefs, 
Spirituality is rooted in the ideals of human nature. Being a better person. Breathing exercises, meditation and prayer, they all help us open our minds. Take stock of who we are and to put life back into perspective. And let's face it, most of us could do with a bit of that. Officially, my quest is over for another month. Between you and me, it's really just begun.